Many artists also comment that this palette design is good as a travel set. Well, for me, it's both a yes and a no. Hi guys, this is again Alan and welcome back to my channel. Today here in the Philippines, we are now on our 26th week of the quarantine. So I'm praying that you guys are all safe, sound, and healthy at the comfort of your homes. Today, I'm very excited because I'm gonna be reviewing another watercolor set and this is from the Czech Republic. It's my first time to review something from that country and you all know I'm a collector of watercolor paints from different parts of the world so this is another special edition and by the way this was also requested by three of our friends here on YouTube and they are Replicana, Mais Alguma Koisu and Big Boy Animation. So guys, thank you for your request. I'm now granting it. And so without further ado, we are going to be reviewing today the Koinur Anilinki Brilliant Watercolors from the Czech Republic. I got my set from Amazon US through a friend for 9.1 US dollars or roughly 440 Philippine pesos. I believe this set is also available at Jovir Philippines and at some online shops like Lazada and Shopee Philippines. But the prices there are really ridiculously high, I don't know why. So let me know if you want to try this out and I might be able to sell this in my Shopee store at a much affordable price. And anyway, I'd be putting all the useful links at the description box should you wish to have direct access to the sellers of this set. Upon checking their website, they have uh, various sets. Um, they have the Brilliant set in disc and in rectangular palettes. And they also have the regular watercolor set. So for the Brilliant set, they have 12, 24, and 36 colors. I got the 24 colors only. And also according to their website, the brilliant watercolors are ideal for school children. And also it says there, after we introduce classic watercolors to our children and we are confident that they have mastered a proper way of holding brush and handling watercolors, it is time to discover new yet unknown brilliant watercolors. So I think they're referring to this set. In their US website, they have supplied a color chart for the 24 color set will but the sequencing and the colors are not the same because this set that I have here um, this has a silver color while the US does not have I think a silver color for the 24 color set and also the US version has all the primary colors in a disc along with black white and burnt sienna and here it doesn't appear that way so I'm not using the naming in the US version also in the US website, they have provided an MSDS sheet or the product safety data sheet where at section 1, they are transparent to state that the components or the ingredients of their paints are fillers, binders, dyes, and additives. So that makes it quite clear that the Koinur Anilinki watercolor wheel set is dye based and not pigment based. So. With that information that we have, we do not have strong light fastness confidence. However, they have already mentioned that this set is meant for children and not for professional use. Also, I believe that the Koiner brand is more known for their pencils. Um, the first time I heard about this brand is about the, the pencils, the colored pencils, so yeah. Also, upon checking their website, I found out that they have these seemingly higher grade watercolor paints in the name of Mondeluz Artists Watercolors that are sold in individual pans and in sets also. I think they have 48 colors if I counted it correctly in their chart. Anyway, I'd be putting all the useful links at the description box, both the Czech Republic and US websites. So now let's check out the box. The box is obviously green. It's very simple. It doesn't look formal. It looks very fancy and it's a paper box by the way and it has a uh, handle here. So here you'll find the logo of Koinur Heart Moth pencils since 1790. So I believe that um, proves that they're more you know engaged into uh, making pencils especially in the earlier years so here it says anilinki so i think that's the line name and it says here 24 colors barev 
So, Barev, I think, is um, color. And it says here, Hobby Collection. Brillianti Vodove Barvi. So, that's Brilliant Watercolors. On this side, we have a preview on how the discs look like. And it says here, Made in Czech Republic, European Union, 24 watercolors. On this side, we have here the website. This is the Czech website. It says here, water soluble, rich color shades, healthy, friendly, mixable colors, and again, 24 colors by rev. It says here, brilliant water colors, water soluble, and the other words here are in different languages. So they have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 different languages for some immediate information. And it says here, again, Czech Republic, I think they're giving us here the address and the contact information of the manufacturer. So it says here, not intended for 0 to 3 years old. So it doesn't show here any AP compliance ratings. But since this is made for kids, I believe it's non-toxic. Maybe uh, we can double check in their website. So now let's open our box. How do we open it? So like here. By the way, it has a uh, an actual preview in front of the set, the disc set. So here now is our palette set. And it comes in four discs and a cover. So you need to twist it this way to unlock it. So the cover, you can use this cover as a mixing palette. It has um, seven wells. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven wells. And I suggest you put a, a white paper here so that you will be able to uh, see your mixes easier because you have a white background and here now is the first disc so you twist it this way to unlock your discs because it has this like a tongue and groove design for it to uh, lock and unlock so here now are our discs the colors are tricky because they look very deep so you need to swatch them first before you'd be able to recognize the real color of each cake. And that is a good sign because whenever you see dried paints and you hardly recognize which color it is, it means that it's very saturated. Except of course for some of the colors that are really uh, lighter in hue like the yellows, you can easily recognize them. And let me just make a very quick comparison um, to show what I was talking about, about the depth of the color. Um, so this is now giving me a sign that the colors are very saturated and deep because the colors are deep from the cakes as compared to the Simba Lion set where you can easily see the colors in their dry form or in the cake form but when you apply it on paper it becomes lighter because that's the nature of watercolors when you activate them and put them on paper you expect that they will lighten at a certain level or percentage so yeah this is a good sign visually anyway i'm gonna be swatching them in this sequence i cannot bring out the cakes or the paints because the plastic is really sturdy. It's really hard. It's not a cheap plastic. It's really solid. So I think I'd be uh, following the sequence. So I'm going to be starting with white um, in clockwise order. So let's start swatching. So now for our sample painting, of course, as always, we are going to be using Arches 185 Cold Pressed Cotton Paper. And for our brushes, I have here Royal Aqualon 2150 Size 10 and my Silver Black Velvet Number 4. 
And by the way, we are not gonna be re-wetting our cakes prior to swatching and painting to be fair with the other brands that we have reviewed before. And also, we are not pre-activating them to see how easily they activate. <laughs> Let's begin with white. So obviously, it's opaque. And by the way, the texture of these watercolor cakes are weird. They're rough and uh, they have these uneven color so that is quite scary but i'm still having my trust in this brand because it's made in czech republic <laughs> okay so let's continue i think this is cool yellow yeah Ooh. from here it doesn't look um, lemon yellow but obviously in the swatch it's lemon yellow a cool yellow and it's transparent the cakes feel really hard I think they're really made that way because of the additives and the binders and it's not pigment based it's dye based so I think it the effect or the texture has something to do with that now we have here another yellow and obviously it does not activate as easy as the uh, other pan sets that we have reviewed before but once you lay your colors down on paper you get surprised because the colors are really vibrant and the colors are clean in paper as compared to how they appear in dry form or in cake now we have this color this is the roughest or the weirdest from all the cakes here so this is another warm yellow but it looks very similar to this yellow here yeah, it looks like a duplicate yellow but from here this one looks deeper like um, a yellow ochre next is this brownish color I think this is uh, Roshiana or yellow ochre yeah I think this is uh, their no it looks like Kinakredon gold wow Kinakredon gold yeah it looks like Kinakredon gold it's very transparent and it's golden yellow next is obviously orange nice this reminds me of the superior <laughs> watercolors but they're really transparent except for white yeah this is like vermilion next I think this is their mid red yeah yeah but this also looks very close to this warm red that we just had earlier next is this very deep color here you couldn't almost recognize it but I think this is magenta yeah magenta that is uh, I think yeah can magenta nearer to uh, purple Hmm, this is nice next is another red color I think this is a lizard and crimson yeah yeah a lizard and crimson or um, mother but they should have put it here before the magenta next is this mysterious color it looks very dark but I think this is violet yeah it's violet it's super dark it almost looks like a black color from here so far this is the strongest color here I can not say it's pigmented because it's not pigment based it's dye based maybe I can just say very saturated next is this another mysterious color here that looks like 
gray. Let's see. Oh, this is blue. Um, like Prussian blue. Oh no, phthalo blue. This is phthalo blue green shade. I suggest you make your uh, swatches here in the center in a pie form so that you won't be confused. I think this is turquoise. Yeah, it's a uh, phthalo turquoise. You couldn't almost recognize it from from the cakes. So next I think this is uh, Russian blue. No, oh, this looks like another Taylor blue. I think this is just the same. But they look different from the cakes over here. Yeah. This looks warmer as compared to this one. Now we have another blue here. I think this is their warm blue but it's very deep we need to uh, yeah yeah I'm so happy they have an ultramarine here but it's interesting to see an ultramarine <laughs> that is dye based so we are not expecting granulation here next is this green here I think this is sap green. Yeah. Next is this green that doesn't look green <laughs> um, from the screen, but I think this is an olive green. Next is another green. No, it's a uh, an elementary green. You know the the real green from the color wheel. <laughs> so this is black. Yeah, it's a very deep and strong black color. Next is another black or green. Oh. Yeah, this is a deep Thalo green blue shade. Yes, it's a Thalo green. Now we have another brown here. I think this is burnt umber. Yeah. Burnt umber. But this is very uh, light and transparent as compared to the others. Next is this another mysterious <laughs> dark color. I think this is gray. No, no, it's another brown. This is a uh, yeah, a deeper brown. No, so this is the burnt umber, and the first one is the burnt sienna. Because this one is deeper, but it looks really dark from the cakes. So I really suggest you make. A uh, pie chart here at the center so that you won't be confused when you uh, use it and this burnt umber color here is super strong as compared to the burnt sienna it's very uh, deep now we have the mica color here so we'd be only able to recognize it through the black line that we have but I'm not a fan or a user of glittery paints so I don't think I'd be uh, able to use this as much as the other colors silver color has a stain from I think this is a uh, factory fault <laughs> So let me just clean it first so that I can get the real but it's deep mm. 
so it's not very obvious from the screen but yeah it shimmers now for the last color we have gray so now we are done with our swatches so while waiting for our swatches to dry let's proceed to our sample painting and for our mixing palette i'm gonna be using their cover by the way, before I do my sample painting, I have decided to make my swatches first to be put at the center part so that I won't be confused about the colors because they're so confusing because they're very deep. So, let's do this first. So now we won't be confused. <laughs> So now we are gonna be starting with our sample painting and I'm gonna be speeding this up to save time. If you have any questions, just uh, comment it at the comment box and I'll be responding as soon as I can. So let's begin. I think they're not really usual watercolors. They are hard to manage in such a way that they stain your paper really well and they're so <laughs> saturated that a little really goes a long way but it's quite challenging to handle because you really need to make very light washes to achieve these very light colors So now our sample painting and swatches are finally dry, we can now have a closer look. Now when it comes to the color selection, it has 1 white, 3 yellows, 1 orange, 4 reds, 1 violet, 4 blues, 4 greens, a black, 3 earth colors, a silver or a... Uh, mica field white color and a gray i have no huge issues about how they selected colors and distributed the colors for yellow red orange green blue and so on but my main issue about the color selection is that in each of the primary colors they have duplicate of some of the colors like here i think these two yellows are very similar these two blues are also very similar and also these three reds but it's obvious that this red is a bit uh, cooler I think this is the mid red intersection but they're very close and also I think there are too many greens here and these two greens are almost very similar I think I'd be happier if they had a warmer yellow here or a yellow ochre instead and also a more warm or a more orange red here instead of this green i think i'd be happier if they had an indian red or yeah uh, raw umber another brown another earth color would be use more useful and also for me this is not necessary here i think i'd be happier to have another earth color or maybe a warmer gray instead of this also would be better i think now when it comes to the appearance of the colors, I think this is one of the most vibrant colors or watercolors that I've had. The colors are just so very saturated and intense. I think it's very obvious here and I think that's because of its being dye based. So they're like ink and that also makes the paints very transparent. I think this is also one of the most transparent set ever. I think the only opaque colors here are of course those colors that are made out of white like of course the white and these two the gray and uh, this one the one with silver all the other colors are transparent obviously so that's a good thing the flow of the colors is not very strong as you can see we have 
a lot of you know solid or hard edges here but that can be handled that can be uh, resolved however for those who are very particular to that feature you should take note of that <laughs> the color mixing is not an issue but you need to take note that these paints are really strong so just a tiny touch of each color goes a really long way and that can be really tricky because um, they're really strong so you just need a small tiny drop of each color to mix a very light color and actually that was the main issue when I was working on my painting so as you can see the sample painting is very saturated also and the dark parts are also very dark so if you are trying to make a very pleasant and light painting you need to uh, have patience in mixing very light colors and yeah because these are super intense and super <laughs> saturated as i've said they're like ink so now let's check out if they're chalky or not by rubbing a piece of um, napkin so if we get some colors then these are chalky and if also the paper gets messy then it's chalky so let's see I don't think so so they used obviously nice binders and extenders to hold the ink tightly so they're clean yeah the colors are really clean and also I'd like to react on what the Koinur said in their website that these set or these paints are recommended for children that have already mastered the classic or the traditional watercolors um, I would agree that yes this is not for um, your first set of watercolors this is not for beginners but I wouldn't actually also recommend this for children unless they're really advanced as they've said in their website unless they have already mastered the traditional watercolors because these are not easy to handle especially if you are you know young and exploring mixing colors and the real um, behavior of watercolors I think if the child is gonna be using this for coloring books for illustrations I think this will be enough because you won't be needing um, too many mixes there but if you are I think gonna be painting fine art style I think you should go and pursue with a higher grade watercolor paints than this many artists also comment that this palette design is good as a travel set well for me it's both a yes and a no yes because it's round it's small it's easy to hold and can fit your pocket no because it goes into five or six pieces to function if you're using this in a cafe or in your hotel room where you have a comfortable space and a table for your discs, then this should be fine. But if you are planning to use this for plein air sessions or on location painting, I'm afraid this palette design will just give you a headache because it comes into several pieces to be functional. It would have helped if there was an option for you to just select several colors say six colors and just you know bring a single disc but no I'm afraid the cakes are just gonna crack if you force them out of their containers now let's go to our favorite part the comparison portion and let's begin with the set of paints that are less performing as compared to the Koinur Anilinki brilliant watercolors so let's begin with our bottom eight so we have Best Buy Watercolors, Symbolion Watercolors, Dong A Creative, Sterling Arts Watercolors, Giorgioni Watercolor Cakes, Faber Castell Solid Watercolors, Sakura Koi Pocket Filled Sketchbox, and the Reeves Watercolors. These next set of paints are the set of paints that are very comparable to Koinur Anilinki Brilliant Watercolors. They don't necessarily look 
alike because Koinur are really super vibrant. They're one of the most vibrant and they're more vibrant as compared to most of these paints that I'm gonna be showing next. But I think the deciding factor why I might prefer these next sets are the fact that they are um, real watercolors. They feel more watercolor and they're easier to handle at some point. I think the edge of Koinur and Linky Brilliant Watercolors over these sets are I think the transparency and the vibrance. So let's go. Um, Pentel Watercolors, fine. I'd go with Koinur. Art Ranger, still with Koinur. Faber Castell, still with Koinur. Mary's Watercolors, still with Koinur. Mary's Watercolors in Tubes, yeah, still with Koinur. Pebeo Studio Watercolors, still with Koinur Watercolors. Um, now we have Prang 2019 and Prang Watercolors 2007. Obviously, the Koinur is brighter, but I think um, the Prang watercolors are more standard as compared to the behavior of Koinur. So, if you are after vibrancy and transparency, go with Koinur. But if you are after a more standard watercolors set that is cheaper <laughs> and uh, yeah, more standard, go for Prang. Now, let's go to Simi Art Solid watercolors. I think, yeah, I'd go with the Simi Art and as well as the Pretty Excellent, also the Superior Fan Palette. Simi Art Semi Dry Watercolors, super superior watercolors in pants. Um, the Himi Mia, but this is gouache. Himi Mia Solid Watercolors and Simi Arts. I think I'd go with these um, watercolor sets because they're also vibrant, but they're more watercolor. So I'd go with them. Now let's proceed to the top student grade paints that are of course more preferable as compared to the Koinur watercolors because these are more established, they have pigment codes, they have like fastness ratings so I'm choosing these paints. So let's begin with Sonnet watercolors. We have Windsor Newton Cutman, the Van Gogh 20 new colors and the Van Gogh 12 plus 3 half pan set. Now we go to the artist grade paints that are, of course, preferable as compared to the Koinur and Linky Brilliant watercolors. I think this is no question anymore, and this is just for visual comparison. So let's have Kokuyo Kamlin Camel watercolors, Lucas Aquarel 1862, Prima Marketing Tropicals, Mary's Masters watercolors, Paul Rubens watercolors, Mongyo Professional watercolors. Winsor Newton Professional, Egalio Honey Watercolors, the Holbein Artists Watercolors in Tubes, Holbein Botanical Art Set, White Knights Full Pants 36 Color Set, White Knights Watercolors in Tubes, Rembrandt Watercolors, Mijello Mission Gold Class 36 Color Set, Mijello Pure Pigment Set 26 Colors, Daniel Smith Sticks. The Daniel Smith Alvaro Castanay set and the Daniel Smith Ultimate Mixing set. Now, if you are gonna ask me about the verdict, would I recommend the Koinur and the Linky Brilliant watercolors? My answer is honestly a mix <laughs> because, yeah, I have mixed feelings about this. If you are really after saturated colors, transparent colors, strong colors then I think you should try this but if you are after you know traditional watercolors that are vibrant and uh, pigment based I think you should look for something else because these are not traditional watercolors they're like ink and they're dye based and also if you are after paints that are pigment based and of course paints that are gonna last that are light fast then I think this is not for you because these are dye based and of course dyes are not permanent and for that I think you should go for a more traditional watercolors that use light fast pigments I think this is good for projects that are going to be scanned for sketchbooks I think this is best for craft work for paintings on coloring books for adult coloring books I think this is best 
Yeah, I actually had a hard time managing the colors earlier because it was my first time to work on something like this. They're like the ink from the printer. The colors are really staining. It creates hard edges. They're really strong, staining, and saturated that they are almost very hard to handle. And they're dye-based. So that's my main issue here. I think it's not for me as of the moment. I think I need to uh, explore this type of medium. I think it's obvious. They're very intense. They're very transparent. But they're dye-based. And the colors are too strong to handle. So I think that's all for the Koinur Anilinki Brilliant Watercolors. I think I am again very honest today. And I hope that's fine with you. Um, if you have requests, just keep them coming. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, I am reading them all one by one. And I'm trying to respond to each one of you day by day. So I hope you stay patient. Please just keep your suggestions coming because I am listening. And just for announcement, I'm gonna be having more sets and paints to review till January. So I hope you stay patient about that. And after that, I'm gonna be doing the light fastness testing for all those 60 or 70 brands and sets that I have. And after that, I'm gonna be doing paper review and brushes review also. So I hope you stay and I hope you stay patient for that. So I think we're done and again thank you for watching and see you again next week.